Bria here from Ash Actuarial, and then today I'm doing something a little bit different than usual. I'm answering your questions. Okay, so this video is going to be answering beginner questions about the actuarial career. I've had tons and tons and tons of comments on different videos throughout my whole YouTube channel, and there are lots of questions that get repeated over and over again. So I'm creating this video to answer beginner questions that I've heard lots, tons of times. If you have a question that I don't answer in the video, make sure you ask it down below because I might answer those ones in a future video. And I also will be down there in the chat just uh, kind of answering questions there too. So make sure you ask any questions you have about starting your actuarial career or just things you've been wondering down below. So first question, I get this all the time, is do you need a bachelor's degree in order to be an actuary? And this is a little bit of a tricky answer because in order to be a fully qualified actuary, you don't actually need a bachelor's degree. You can be an FSA or an FCAS with just a without a bachelor's degree. If you just pass all the exams and you meet all the different requirements that the different societies have for you, then you can be a fully qualified actuary. But the problem is that most companies won't hire someone that doesn't have a bachelor's degree. And actually, when I say most companies, I don't know of a company that would hire someone in an actuarial role that doesn't have a bachelor, bachelor's degree. And that's separate from internships and stuff. You can be in the process of getting your bachelor's degree and you may still be able to get an internship. But in order to get a full-time job, you're going to need a bachelor's degree um, because employers want that, they expect that, and um, like every aspiring actuary is just gonna need that. So get a bachelor's degree, you need it. Um, if you've heard before that you don't need a bachelor's degree, they're probably referring to the fact that you can become an actuary without a, a degree, but in order to get hired, you do need one, okay? So that is question number one. I have seven of them for you. So the next one is, is from So. He says, if I have an IT background with a statistics degree and two exams passed, what are they qualified to apply to actuarial positions? And the answer is absolutely yes. Okay, so three main things that actuarial employers are going to be looking for is your experience and your exams and your technical skills. So if you have an IT background, you probably have some pretty good technical skills, I would guess. Uh, this so says he has uh, two exams passed, so that's great. And in terms of related experience, well, it's still possible to get an actuarial job without related experience, although I think it's going to make your search much easier if you do have some. But, so you could still get a job without it. So definitely I would suggest that So keeps on applying to jobs even though he doesn't have the related experience because you never know, you still can get a job with some technical skills and exams passed. What's really important though, is you make sure you show how your past experience is relevant to the actuarial career so that actuarial employers will get a good sense of how your skills apply to an actuarial world. Next question is from Jessica and she says, are internships necessary even after passing all the exams? Okay, so most people are not going to pass all the actuarial exams before they even start working. It's, it, it would be kind of silly to do that. So if you've passed all the exams, it's kind of too late for an internship. You needed to get a full-time job many years ago. <laughs> After you've passed one or two or three exams, you can start and actually have a good chance of getting a full-time position. So I wouldn't recommend passing all the exams before you even try to get an internship, never mind a full-time job. So. My answer here is if you've passed all the exams, you've waited way too long, you needed to start looking for internships and full-time jobs much sooner. Next question is from Alby. And this question is, do actuarial employers prefer young applicants? Are they particular about age? And I actually did a YouTube video about this just a couple of weeks ago. And I will link to that in the description down below. So you can go check that out. Uh, but really, Age is a factor that some employers might consider, but you have to find the companies that don't care about age or that are willing to hire, um, even though you might be an older applicant. Remember, as an older applicant, you have lots of experience 
that recent graduates aren't going to have. And that can give you an upper, like an upper hand that can give you a big advantage. So you have to make sure that you are showing employers how your past experience is relevant to what they're looking for, an actuarial person, someone to fill an actuarial role. And that's going to give you a big advantage. So yes, yeah, some companies are just going to want to hire younger applicants, but there are going to be lots of companies that are perfectly fine hiring someone that is a bit older, has more experience. Um, and it really comes down to the exams, the technical skills, the experience that you have. And if you have those three things, you're going to be a really good candidate. So keep searching for jobs and do not give up. Someone will hire you. Okay, next question is from Alan. Alan says, what is the procedure to specialize in a particular industry like health and re or retirement? Okay, for this one, I want to share my screen with you. Okay, so I'm on the Society of Actuaries website right now, and you can go to this URL if you want. I will link it down below in the description, but this is where you're going to see the different, oh, sorry, I should be in the FSA requirements. This is where you're going to see the different tracks that you need if you decide to go the SOA route. Now the SOA deals with life insurance primarily. You can get involved with any of these six tracks. So they have a general insurance track, a group and health track, a retirement benefits track, an individual life and annuities track, that's what I did, um, the quantitative finance and investment track, and they have the corporate finance and ERM track. So really, you don't have to decide on your track until you've passed all the, the ASA exams, until you're a full ASA. And that's when you're going to start taking different exams that are relevant to the track that you want to take. There's also the possibility of going into uh, property insurance and if you decide to do that you're going to go into the casualty actuarial society exams, the CAS exams, and that's that only has one track. All Everyone in CAS writes the same exams um, and really that's that's the process. So once you pass your third exam you will then have to decide whether you want to go the SOA route or the CAS route because there are going to be different exams depending on which route you decide to take. Now, I know you might be thinking, how do you decide? And the answer is, well, most people decide whether they're going to go the CAS route or the SOA route by what job they get first. If they get a job that's in life insurance, then they're going to go the SOA route. And if they get a job in property insurance, then they're going to go the CAS route. So it really just does the come down to where you get your first job, for most people anyway. Next question is from Melanie, and she says, what are some resources to refamiliarize myself with calculus since it's been a while? Okay, well, good news, I have a blog post on my website all about the top resources I recommend for this. I will link it down in the description. Uh, but my number one choice is Khan Academy. It's spelled K-H-A-N academy.com, actually .org. And they have a really good site full of tons and tons and tons of math content. But if you go to the calculus section of the website, it's going to guide you through very beginner calculus to more advanced calculus. And it's a really good refresher for anyone that has taken calculus in the past and needs a refresher on it. Okay, so Melanie, I highly recommend you go check out uh, that blog post that I mentioned. And in that blog post, I give you a link to Khan Academy and some other resources that you might find helpful. The last question is, should I major in math and statistics instead of actuarial science? Okay, so most of the time I recommend not majoring in actuarial science because if you decide you don't wanna be an actuary anymore or you end up not getting a job in actuarial work so you want to go work in a different field, it might make it a bit more difficult for you to get a job in a different area because actuarial science is so specialized. Most people aren't really familiar with what actuarial science is, so they don't really know what your degree entails. So that's why I typically do recommend, those are two of the reasons, I typically recommend that someone just majors in math and statistics, or math or statistics, or some other field other than actuarial science specifically. Now there are some, some scenarios where majoring in actuarial science might be a good idea. One of those is that you get a lot of internship opportunities potentially. Some schools have a program that you can get into 
that allows you to, or they help you find internships and co-op opportunities like the University of Waterloo. That's where I went, it's in Canada. And they had a whole program for their actuarial science students where they would help them find internships and placements where they could work and get experience while they were still in school. So that was a huge benefit. Another benefit is that all the courses there are really focused on passing actuarial exams. So some of the courses correspond really closely to the material on exams. So in that sense, it makes it easier to prepare for actuarial exams. But you can still learn all of that stuff outside of courses, and you can still get internships without being in a program. So there are pros and cons, but I think it's a really big downside is the fact that um, you kind of are specializing in one very small area, one small field. And if you decide you don't want to do that in the future, then it might cause some troubles for okay. you. That is all the questions. I hope this helped you. If you have other questions that I haven't answered, make sure you put them down below in the comments. And I will make sure to do another video just like this where I answer more questions. And I will also be answering your questions down in the comments later on. Okay, bye for now.